so if we introduce nonlinear action at cross section or member level we have to use this approach concentrated plasticity approach and the basic idea is that we assume that in elastic action cracking yielding crushing anything slip they all concentrate at a particular location what is that location we'll see in a moment but we assume that it is not distributed along the length for fiber modeling approach we define the material right at the most fundamental level which is the material level and we do not disturb our cross section and and uh, member capacity we do not provide them this non linear material behavior stress strain curve is expected to automatically affect the cross section and member level so program will automatically be able to calculate member capacities once we put the the material level stress strain curves as an input and those material non non linearity can be assumed distributed along the length of that member uh, this is called fiber modeling approach it can go all along the full length or part of the length also so two approaches we'll discuss but but today's lecture is about the the lumped plasticity approach or plastic hinge approach that is simpler so i just uh, put it first in next session we'll we'll discuss the fiber modeling approach so today's topic is plastic hinge approach or concentrated plasticity approach so let's start discussing what is a plastic hinge uh in order to go to that uh, definition or that particular concept we have to start from here for any cross section let's say it is a beam or a column at any cross section we know that we have 6 degrees of freedom in three dimensional space let's represent them as u z u x u y these are the translational degrees of freedom and also the rotational degrees of freedom about the same three axes uh, u x u r x r y r z so six degrees of freedom three translations and three rotations so there are there are six ways in which any point in uh, three dimensional space can move it can translate in three directions or it can rotate in three directions so this point uh may be the edge of a particular beam or a column right corresponding to each degree of freedom we have an action for example uh the rotation about the longitudinal axis r y the action corresponding to that is m y and that is actually torsion right uh, how you can check that uh, using the right hand rule that you can point your thumb towards the direction of that particular axis about which you have to check the the moment and rotation so you will see that the rotation about y axis in this particular figure is actually the torsion for this beam right similarly if i ap apply a vertical load on along the span of that that beam uh, the the uh, the moment about x axis is the primary bending moment Uh, which will be caused by that applied loading let's say p moment about y x axis how you can check that you can point your thumb towards x axis and the curl of your fingers are actually telling you how the deformation will occur in that particular moment right if you point your fingers uh, your thumb towards my you will see that fingers will curl around that beam which is indicating the twist and the moment my is actually the torque or torsion right similarly if apply i apply a lateral load let's say v to this beam the primary bending moment caused by this load v is actually mz because you will see that the curl of your fingers will be in the direction where the v is rotating your beam right similarly uh, p here is representing the axial translational action vz and vx are telling you or they are indicating the shear action right so if you summarize the six actions corresponding to six degrees of freedom they are actually what there is one torsion two bending moments in the perpendicular directions two shear forces and one axial load these are the six actions 
each corresponding to a degree of freedom so let's call it t and axial load p uh, m2 m3 or m uh, x m y are the three tra uh, three rotational actions p v x and v y they are the three translational actions right the n now let's extend that concept each of the action which is corresponding to a degree of freedom each of the action also have a corresponding deformation right so for example torque have a deformation called twist axial load have a deformation called axial shortening or axial elongation uh, mx and my bending moments have a deformation called rotation of beam and rotation of beam or curvature also is a mo moment deformation vx and vy are the shear forces and there is a shear deformation gamma associated with these actions so six actions have six deformations by default each of the action and corresponding deformation in a linear elastic model is is related by a constant quantity called stiffness of that action you remember i gave an example of uh, theta is equal to tl over jg you remember this formula from the strength of materials it is what it is a it is a deformation associated with its action related to that action using a constant quantity called torsional stiffness m is equal to ei into phi this is what this is a uh, 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 an action related to its deformation using a constant quantity called uh, stiffness right so for each of the action we have a stiffness and a deformation and the general expression which governs our linear model is action is equal to stiffness into deformation right so let me write it here action for any it can be any action out of these six is equal to stiffness times deformation right if i graphically show this it is like this action on y axis deformation on x axis and the relationship between them is forever linear and the slope of that relationship is stiffness right you can write this relationship or this graph for for any level material level this will become stress is equal to e into strain right cross section level m is equal to ei into phi whole member level m is equal to ei over l into into theta right by the way there is a difference between curvature and rotation which i should explain right at start uh, bending moment will cause curvature that cross sectional deformation at cross section level but at full member level let's talk about the full beam this is our original beam and this is the deformed shape after the bending moment is applied let's say this m is applied at the end and this is the de default shape so at any particular point uh, if i take the tangent let's say i draw a tangent at this particular location the angle which that tangent make with horizontal is called rotation of that beam so if i draw the tangent at the end the angle with horizontal will be theta or rotation so rotation is the deformation associated with bending moment at full member level when the whole member is considered but when one cross section is considered only the bending moment cause curvature in that cross section right but for full member level bending moment cause rotation so there is a difference between moment and, uh, the curvature and rotation although they are convertible you have to just integrate one over a particular length to get the other right but there is a difference so moment is related to rotation at full member level but moment is related to curvature at cross section level right so i'll be using both of these examples because they all both of them have the same form action is equal to stiffness into deformation so uh, the point for this whole discussion is that you can 
convert your computer model such that this stiffness is replaced by the complete nonlinear curve between a particular action and its corresponding deformation right by default the program will will have that stiffness or will construct that stiffness but you will have the capacity to replace that constant number with a complete nonlinear curve if you want to replace and that you can do a, for any degree of freedom right so you can tell the program that the relationship between axial load p and the axial shortening let's say delta the relationship between that is no more linear you can tell the program that it should follow this nonlinear behavior p versus delta that after a certain p my beam or my column should should be assumed that it is it is yielded already no more increase in p for forever right you can make shear force and shear deformation relationship as non linear you can make moment versus rotation behavior as non linear right so any of the six degrees of freedom you can make it non linear by replacing its constant stiffness by a complete curve and this you will do using a special element called plastic hinge right plastic hinge can be in any degree of freedom and based on what degree of freedom it is it have different types you have a moment versus rotation plastic hinge you have an axial versus axial uh, deformation plastic hinge you have a shear force versus shear deformation plastic hinge so depending upon uh, what degree of freedom that hinge affect or what degree of freedom of that hinge is applicable to uh, there are different types of hinges flexural hinges which are which control only the moment degree of freedom shear hinge which control only the shear degree of freedom or axial hinge which control the axial and you also have a torsional hinge which control the torsional degree of freedom uh, you can give your own torque versus twist behavior uh, torque versus angle of twist behavior and program will follow that behavior for that particular element so how you define these relationships using a special hypothetical element called plastic hinge you introduce that element at a particular location in your model and that element will require only that relationship as an input right so the degree of freedom at that particular location whatever is it is it beam or a column that degree of freedom will be affected depending upon what type of hinge you introduce right so we have uh, shear hinges axial hinges torsional hinges for moment we have two types of hinges moment versus rotation hinge and moment versus curvature hinge uh, depending upon at what level you want to define nonlinearity if you want to define nonlinearity at uh, cross section level you will define uh, moment curvature hinge if you want to define the flexural nonlinearity at the whole member level go for the moment rotation hinge right so uh, these are the different types of hinges available in uh, in e tabs and perform 3d